Sable is a game that drip feeds lore over the course of the story. Like many others, it's up to the player to piece together the events that take place before the gameplay begins. I was fascinated by what the title showed us, and began speculating what happened in between the bits and pieces given to us in game. This is a speculative timeline of the events that led to the story of Sable, based on the old captain's logs found on ships throughout the world. unknown number of years before the story begins, a ship known as the Whale and its fleet of at least seven others began approaching the planet on which Sable takes place, Midden. This fleet was presumably sent by Earth to dispose of atomic waste, but after getting close to the planet, the entire mission changed. It became an act of survival. Once within close range, the Whale began to pick up a chaotic signal that somehow maintained itself, which the AI of the ship, Sarun, referred to as the Perpetual. The crew realized whatever this was, it was dangerous, so they avoided the planet as long as they could. This didn't last, however, because the ship's atomic reactors needed to be purged every so often on the surface of a planet. The reactors began failing, so the crew made the decision to approach Midden, as they had no other choice. This would be the genesis of Sable. Once the fleet reached the atmosphere, the Perpetual seemed to have noticed them and promptly disabled their reactors and prevented the ships from being powered properly again. The fleet crash-landed across the map of the game, scattered throughout the different locations. The planet was not habitable when the ships crashed, but in the story of the game we clearly see differently, so we can assume the crew began terraforming the planet in order to make it habitable. This, knowingly, would spread radiation across the planet for at least 100 years. This radiation is likely what killed the megafauna whose remains are seen at the bottom right of the map. For about 15 years after the crash, the crews are able to traverse the planet, with protection, to travel from one ship to another. This doesn't last, due to the radiation becoming too much for the human body to handle, so the crews are secluded to their ships for at least 85 years. The Captain of the Whale, Singh is complimented by Sauron on the masks in the last captain's log we hear. Because of this, we can assume Singh first created the masks that are so prevalent in the game, and that the crews of each ship had some of these masks before being secluded for 85 years. This leads me to believe that while the crews were isolated, they held on to these masks as something to give them meaning, and this might be when the masks were first used to identify different skill sets. After those 85 years of seclusion, and a few generations of humans, the planet became habitable as the radiation dissipated. At this point, the crew's descendants in each ship likely know about the crash and about the other crews, yet form strong bonds with their fellow ship's inhabitants while in seclusion, resulting in what are essentially clans. After realizing the planet is habitable, these clans likely stay separated, focusing on their individual survival. The two most important of these clans come from the Whale and the center of Brunswick. I believe the Whales clan went on to use their knowledge of the atomic reactor in the top left of the map to build the city of Ecria, where they would have both power and water. I think the center of Brunswick clan went on to build the Watch, in an attempt to study the perplexing Perpetual. I believe the studying of the Perpetual led the clan to take on the new name, Ikari, and form a culture around this mysterious might. This new clan would go on to become the most prevalent on the planet. After utilizing the watch to study the solar system and perpetual, the Ikari began combining their machines, using leftover parts from crashed ships, with the perpetual to create new technology. This can be seen in the face doors, the Ikari bike parts, and any glowing blue and red lights throughout the map. The Ikari also built the monuments found in the game. Eventually, they began understanding the perpetual enough to harness it without the use of past technology, and created the gliding stones. I believe the gliding stones were first used to aid in exploration of what was then a fairly unknown territory. Over time, as they sent people out gliding, this took the shape of gliders finding their place in the world, be it machining, climbing, or whatever else. This likely caused the Ikari to lose their numbers to clan members finding their place in other clans. I don't think the Ikari ever really died out, but instead dissolved into the populations of the other communities on the planet. This led to the clan being mostly forgotten at time and only their traditions being passed down. This gliding tradition continues throughout history, up until our story as Sable begins. 
this interpretation of the timeline answers a lot of questions. It still doesn't give us a good idea of how long it was in between the fleet crashing and Sable's gliding. One consistency seen throughout the map is the fauna. There are multiple different types of birds, beetles, and butterflies seen within the game. This makes me think the Whale and Company didn't have just one objective of waste disposal. Instead, it leads me to believe they were also in search of another habitable planet, or perhaps a planet that could be made habitable. I don't know a lot about sustaining life, but I do know butterflies help plants reproduce, birds easily spread seeds of plants, and beetles are good for helping those plants grow. I think the crew brought with them a large sample of these three creatures, and once the planet was habitable, released them to further the habitability. Over time, the animals spread out into the different territories of the map, evolving to fit into their niches, akin to Darwin's finches. This would explain why we see so many different types of butterflies and beetles. One example is the Herculean beetles, which found no natural predators and had sustainable sustenance, which in turn led to them evolving to be more than 10 times their original size. I'm really not sure exactly how long this would take, but Darwin's finch has evolved over a 2 million year period, so perhaps Sable's gliding begins that long after the ship's crash. This would mean the crews of the ships continued reproducing for millions of years, which seems unlikely, so I'm not sure if this theory really has a place in this speculation. Basically, we don't know how long it was in between the game taking place and the ships crashing on Midden. We do know that everything took place a long time ago. In summary, the Whale and Company crash land on Midden due to the perpetual interfering with them. The crews terraformed the planet to make it habitable, releasing oodles of radiation into the atmosphere in the process. This kills all the major life on the planet and lasts for at least 100 years. During this time, masks start to take form and begin acquiring meaning. After this, the crew's descendants study the perpetual until they can harness it. This leads to the creation of gliding stones, and the story of Sable. This speculative timeline still leaves a lot of questions, and I plan on making separate videos discussing certain topics in depth but for now I wanted to discuss the general happenings of Midden's past before diving deep into other topics, like what the mask makers are. I think they're machines, but I'll make a video on that later. If anything doesn't add up in my theory, or you have something to contribute, by all means let me know. If you have any questions, throw those at me too. And if you thought this was stupid, also let me know. And if anyone watched this, thank you.